you must realize there aren't enough Jedi to protect the Republic. We are keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Mace Windu, to Sheev Palpatine in the decade that followed the Battle of Naboo, the Galactic Republic faced an existential crisis as thousands of star systems and powerful corporations threatened to secede from the ancient Democratic Union. Chancellor Palpatine assured the Jedi Council that his office was seeking a peaceful resolution with the Separatists, and that he would not permit secession to divide the Millennium Old Republic. Despite the Chancellor's assurances, Mace Windu advised him to consider just how vulnerable the Republic truly was. The Jedi Order lacked the sufficient manpower to defend the entire Republic in the event of war. Moreover, the Order was a force of peacekeepers rather than soldiers. As the Galactic Senate continued to debate over whether to vote for or against the proposed Military Creation Act, Senator Padme Amidala narrowly avoided an assassination attempt on her life. During a meeting with the Chancellor, she revealed to Windu and Yoda her suspicion that Count Dooku was involved in the attack. Although Dooku had renounced his Jedi status before becoming the leader of the Separatist movement, Windu refused to believe that even a former Jedi could be involved in a plot to assassinate the Naboo senator, or anyone for that matter. Nevertheless, Windu heeded Yoda and Palpatine's warning that Amidala's life was in grave danger, regardless of whether Dooku was personally involved or not. As such, he dispatched Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to serve as temporary bodyguards for the senator. After the death of Amidala's would-be assassin, Zam Wessel, Windu and the Council instructed Kenobi to track Wessel's accomplice who evaded capture. They also ordered Skywalker to accompany Amidala to her home planet of Naboo in case of another assassination attempt against her. While the Separatist crisis worsened, Windu concurred with Yoda's belief that the dark side of the Force was responsible for the turmoil that undermined galactic peace and stability. They were especially disturbed to learn that Kenobi's investigation led him to the planet Kamino where their agent discovered the existence of a secret army, hundreds of thousands of clone troopers, in addition to a million more units in development. Prime Minister Lama Su, the leader of the Kaminoan cloners, revealed that the army was made to serve the Galactic Republic. He also asserted that the client who commissioned the project was the late Jedi Master Sifo Dyas, whom he presumed was alive and a leading member of the Jedi Council until Kenobi corrected his assumption. Kenobi followed the source of the clone army, the bounty hunter Jango Fett, to the planet Geonosis where he reported another discovery to Windu and Yoda, both of whom witnessed his transmission in the Chancellor's office. Dooku and the Separatist Council had no intention of negotiating a peaceful solution with the Republic, they merely stalled for time in order to construct a massive army of battle droids for one purpose, to wage war on the Republic. After the Senate voted to empower Chancellor Palpatine with emergency wartime powers, which he quickly used to authorize the formation of the Grand Army of the Republic, Windu led a Jedi assault team to Geonosis in order to rescue Kenobi while Yoda moved to take command of the clone troopers on Kamino.